Welcome back to another video here on Inside EVs. Welcome here to Northern Colorado. Welcome back to another 70 mile per hour highway range test. And welcome back to the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, the wagon version of the Taycan. You guys know I love fast wagons. And this is really one of my ultimate, ultimate EVs on the market right now. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be taking the Taycan Cross Turismo for a 70 mile per hour highway range test. And you might be saying, well, Kyle, didn't Tom recently do this on a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo? The answer is yes but now we have the ultimate spec for range. And also we always do each other's tests the same. We always verify our results. Each test is a little different, different conditions. So I'll walk you through the testing procedures. I'll walk you through the specification on this car, which is ultimate range spec for a Cross Turismo. And then I'll walk you through how the rest of this day is gonna go. I gotta say, not starting off on a great note here because this charger is labeled as a 125 kilowatt shared charger. All of these are, uh, but I'm only getting 200 amps, so about 80, 85 kilowatts out of it, which means plugging in at 20% state of charge is gonna take yeah, a long time, roughly an hour and a bit to full charge this thing. Now the Taycan can accept 270 kilowatt charging, but unfortunately up here where I live, nothing like that around here at all i gotta go south to get there and this is where i do all my mpg tests for gas cars and all my range tests for electric cars and not that big of a deal but let me explain why we're here at a dc charger Part of our testing procedures for our 70 miles per hour highway range test, as you know, is DC fast charging the car to 100%. The reason we do this is especially to counteract weather differences. So in the middle of winter, especially, we wanna make sure the packs are warm, everything's nice and toasty before we head out. Conversely, in the summertime, we wanna make sure the cars are at operating temperature just fine. And DC charging is the quickest way to heat up the car. So every range test that I do, I run the car super hard throughout the day. Sometimes I even DC charge them ahead of time. Uh, here in this case, I took this car for a blast in the canyons. I pulled in here with the battery just below operating temp. Uh, Porsche is really nice. They give you a uh, battery temperature gauge. So I pulled in here with about 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the battery pack. It's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Perfect temperatures, no wind, super rare for here. So that's why I decided to do the test tonight because the conditions are mega. And so what we're doing is we're charging the car up from 20%. You can see Alyssa is with me, charging the car from 20% all the way up to 100%. You can see here the car is predicting about one hour, seven minutes remaining. That sounds pretty good to me. No problem to wait that long. Really not that big of a deal. We're still sitting at 87 kilowatts as pack voltage comes up. We should get some more amps. We're probably using the 400 volt booster. I'm not really sure, but either way, I noticed the same charging uh, uh, bug, I should say, with the Polestar 2 when I did the range test here just a couple weeks ago. You can see here it says 125 kilowatt shared. Well, you would think you could get 125 kilowatt if you're the only one here, but not the case. Anywho, let me talk about the spec on this car because it's perfect for this test. Porsche built this car for our range testing uh, and other outlets range testing too, but it's the perfect, perfect spec. So. Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, in theory, should do a little bit less than the uh, Porsche uh, Taycan Non Cross Turismo, just because it's less aerodynamic with the wagon back. This particular car's EPA range rated at 215 miles. Uh, I've never range tested a Cross Turismo before, but if the sedans are anything to go by, we should exceed the EPA range rating. Uh, this particular car is on the 19 inch aero wheels, which will really help. I have the tire pressure set as I do at the beginning of every range test at manufacturer suggested pressures cold. Um, other things to note about this car, no power charging ports, which is a big deal. So let me see if I can get into an angle to show you this. Don't know if you can quite see it. I don't think you can, but this little area right here creates a bit of an air scarf to relieve the high pressure area around the wheel. This does a couple things. It's great for brake cooling for track work, obviously, but it's also better for aerodynamics. So if you're cruising down the road and uh, you know you can really relieve some of that high pressure zone from inside the wheel well. 
and if you get the power charge port that area is completely blocked off so uh, i'm really looking forward to range testing this car tycon four cross turismo the four is the base trim entry level car it's mechanically identical to the 4s the turbo and turbo s have a physically different rear motor than this car and the turbo s comes standard with power charge port also this car does not have the roof rails which is a really awesome touch because if you get the roof rails it should in theory affect aero so as i was saying this thing is built for range aero wheels and power no power charge port and no roof rails this thing if it's ever going to have a shot, it's this right here to see how far it can go in the test. Anyway, we'll let it charge up to 100% and then we'll head out. I'll show you how we'll set up the interior settings of the car before we go. So just as a reminder to run you through the entire testing procedures, we DC charge the cars to 100%. I've explained why. We set the tire pressures to manufacturer suggested. We can get more range out of this test by bumping tire pressures up. We can hypermile. The point of this test is to have as little influence by me, the driver, as possible. When we merge onto highway on ramps, we keep a very consistent light throttle to not have heat loss. The point is to get every car in the same test as scientific as possible of course this is real world it's never going to be like throwing the car on a dyno and doing it in uh, you know a laboratory environment but i think that's okay this is not of course a a uh, laboratory world that we drive in we drive in the real world that's why you'll see us do multiple range tests so uh other than that we're going to full charge the car as soon as it completes we run range mode that lowers the car all the way down backs off some of the air conditioning we jump on the highway we're going to go up into wyoming over to nebraska loop style and then right back to here the reason we have to run a loop style test is purely because of elevation and wind thankfully again no wind today which is awesome so if there's a big elevation difference on the way up there it'll be counteracted on the way back down that's the point you have to do a loop style test no single direction range test in the real world can be accurate at all we also can't rely on anything the bms says inside the car this car uses a guesso meter range calculation so it has no relevance to the range on the car because my driving style changes quite heavily so let's full charge it hit the road and we are almost completely charged up again this is the 93.4 kilowatt hour pack i'm not sure in the exact usable capacity i think 82 to 83 kilowatt hours somewhere in there i don't believe porsche actually states full usable but i think remembering from the technical materials i ran through it's about 83 kilowatt hour usable we're at 99 percent state of charge almost ready to rock and roll batteries nice and toasty we're going to get the car in range mode and we're going to hit the road can't wait to see how far this thing goes man it's going to be a long night the problem with these big huge range evs is it just takes a long time <laughs> well i've just shut off all accessory power because we completed at 100 percent. so i'm going to go unplug the car we're going to hit the road we don't want to waste any energy car on it automatically turns on by the way when i just get in don't need to touch anything into reverse let's get motor in. we'll reset everything here this is always the command screens i know what i'm doing reset all mode range this one doesn't have sport chrono so i got to go in the menus here to get it into range mode ac eco 72 degrees 64 degrees outside um let's talk about tycon really quick 272 miles of projected range that is more than i was expecting because this car i just absolutely shredded up a canyon before this run or before this charge so this is based off my driving history damn i don't know what to expect here because i've never tested across turismo also let's get Alyssa buckled up and then we'll talk about this rear motor situation. Here we are merging out of the come and go gas station, heading up. You can see our chargers here on the right side. Um, awesome, brand new chargers. That was an interesting install. I spoke about it a little bit in the Polestar video. Those chargers went in like a year ago and then they never turned them on. Finally though, just about a month ago, they finally turned them on. So um, I love this particular spot for range test because the terrain is pretty much completely flat for this loop. Um, 
and we're just gonna carry momentum onto the highway here. Tycon handles pretty well and light throttle on the way up. This is pretty much how I do all the highway on ramps. We won't make a loop until we hit Nebraska with this much range, I guess. Um, here we are in range mode. You can see the indication is indicating a front motor output here. Now, Tycon in the past would actually disconnect the rear motor and run front wheel drive. The other thing we have to do as soon as we end this clip, I'm gonna put it to 70 miles per hour, is just verify that GPS is actually 70. Um, I think, based off of my gut feeling on current driving, is I don't think it disconnects the rear motor anymore physically. I think it probably still runs primarily front motor driven. They're both permanent magnet motors, but I think this is gonna hurt the car um, in the range test. So we have Cross Turismo plus this new weird software that no longer disconnects the rear motor. Um, that was always the big thing with Tycon. And it's possible it's still doing it, but I swear I cannot feel this thing engage and disengage like I used to be able to. So it's either the tuning's amazing, or it's just not disconnecting. But either way, let's just see how it does. It doesn't matter, this is the new software, we're running it in our test, and um, I'm so, so pumped, because this is a car I'm personally very interested in owning. We have just dipped down to 90%, and I have to say the first 10% of this trip has gone by flawlessly. Take a look up ahead. We're just about to cross into Wyoming. There's the sign right there coming into good old Wyoming. I will say one of the features I wish we had in this country, which are just the most amazing things, are matrix LED headlights. When we had Tycon Turbo just even, it was almost a few days ago, in Germany, uh, you know, driving on a road like this, it would light up everything except the cars in front of us. I still can't believe Adaptive high beams, I believe is what it's called. Um, yeah, is illegal in the US, just insane. But now we're in Wyoming, the second state on this trip, and we're actually gonna be heading east all the way into Nebraska. Uh, not the first time I've had Tycon in Nebraska. Funny enough, we had it on the uh, on the Cannonball. We had the uh, Tycon through Nebraska, but I believe it is my first time having Tycon in Wyoming. Anyway, uh, 70 miles per hour indicated is a true GPS accurate 70 miles per hour according to our devices, so that's awesome. And lastly, I think uh, I just want to tell you a little bit more about what range mode does because I don't think I gave you a full picture. Uh, first off, in previous Tycons, it would disconnect the rear motor. Pretty sure it doesn't do that. Mentioned that already. Uh, secondly, it lowers the air suspension all the way down to the ground. I mean, we are sitting, you know, just a hair off the pavement. The car looks great. Air suspension's dumped out. I absolutely love it. It also uh, puts the dampers in a range setting, and it's not adjustable. It's super smooth. So cruising along here, it's unbelievably quiet. This car does not have the thermal and noise insulated glass. It's actually a pretty base car. It has premium pack, and that's kind of it. Uh, Bose system is included in that. But um, yeah, not thermal and noise insulated glass, and it's still whisper quiet. Listen. We're on some of the loudest paved roads you can get in the country, and this thing is just a bank vault going down the road. Truly insane. One of the best cars to do a 70 mile per hour highway uh, efficiency test. Even now, 10% into the trip, it's still indicating 231 miles, which is more than the EPA rated range of this car. Tycon's insane. I really am so excited to see what it turns out to be because the first bit going up to Cheyenne does have a little bit of increase of elevation, a hair, and then of course when we go back to the Chargers after doing the whole Nebraska thing, then of course we'll lose a little bit. So it actually gets a little bit more efficient towards the end. Strategy, by the way, to kind of time that getting to the Charger, the distances between exits are huge out here. There are also no other charging stations, let alone DC fast chargers, anywhere near here. So this is like expert level 70 mile per hour highway range tests because you know when we do them in metropolitan areas in connecticut and north carolina uh well you know they, we they, we know all the chargers in the area we're in wyoming there's like no chargers here uh so what we need to do is is be really cautious and careful about getting back to that charger with enough buffer and one of the strategies i have is i've programmed in the destination right next to the DC fast chargers. The reason I don't want to navigate back to the DC chargers is there is a chance that the car will precondition the battery pack on the way to a DC fast charger. Now I know Tycon will DC fast charge, excuse me, I know Tycon will 
precondition the battery pack, heat up the battery for a DC charge if it thinks the charger is 175 kilowatts or higher. This one's only a 125 shared, but we know we can only get about 85, 90 kilowatts out of it. I think we saw peak. Uh, so in theory, the Taycan shouldn't precondition on the way there, but either way, we're just gonna go to the place next door just so we're not burning any energy heating things up. Then of course, we're gonna run it till the car won't move anymore. And that's how you do a proper, proper, proper range test. Anyway, Wyoming's looking desolate as usual and uh, looking forward to seeing how the rest of this test does. I'll update you around 50% state of charge uh, or maybe just ahead of that when we're about to make our U-turn and head back to Wyoming. We are just about to exit the highway in three tenths of a mile. We have literally not come off of 70 miles per hour. There's no traffic around. It's been the perfect range test. Little chilly, 48 degrees, but that's okay because we've warmed up the battery. I've just tapped the brakes to come off 70 miles per hour. We're just exiting to the right here. You'll notice I'm not using high beams. The headlights don't really pull too much power. Um, and I always say that, of course, you know, you can't say it doesn't affect the results. Headlights do pull some power, but it's very negligible. Like I could hit the throttle one time hard and that would make up for the difference. We're just gonna kind of regen to a stop, do as much coasting through here as possible. We are literally in the middle of Nebraska. So just looking around here, don't see anyone. We're just gonna keep the momentum up. That was a full stop for anyone from the Nebraskan government watching. Headlights, PDLS Plus, do the little swivelly thing. That's cool. Woo! And now we're gonna gently merge back up, lock it back in at 70. Talk about a range test. I've programmed in the navigation to the spot next to the DC charger. The Tycon thinks we'll get there at 6%. And um, also wanted to mention this Tycon has the new software on it, which has, I would say, a little bit better charging curve. And I would also say awesome route planning. Tycon's always had good route planning, but now it's like really, really good. Um, you can even set your destination charge percentage. So I can say, I want to get to chargers with 3% and then it'll do its best to get me to chargers with 3%. And then it's like, oh, you only charge for like six minutes. And it's like, yeah, that's the jam. That's the beauty of Tycon. If you have a really good charging infrastructure on the coasts, for example, or if you go across the country in certain areas, then this is the perfect road tripping EV. Nothing comes close except Audi e-tron GT, which is the same car underneath. I have it locked back in at 70 miles per hour. We're at 59% state of charge. So far up to this point, we have traveled 121.3 miles. Wow, this is going to far exceed EPA, but this is the thing. You cannot rely on this data yet. We need to go back because we're actually at a little bit lower elevation than when we started. Yeah, so we have uh, 600 feet of elevation difference, something like this. We need to go back and that is why we do a loop style test. We gained energy on the way up with a little bit of regen here or there perhaps. We'll have to burn a little extra on the way up and that's totally fine. That's why I never say you can trust a single direction range test. We have now just crossed into Colorado. We have 11% state of charge, 31 miles projected remaining, a 3% arrival to our charger. Everything is looking A-OK. -okay. The plan is once we exit the highway with 3%, if we have 4%, we might be able to make it down to the next exit, but I think it's something like six miles it's pretty far maybe we won't be able to make it um, but there's plenty of back roads where we can kind of sustain 60 65 ish miles an hour something like this to run the car all the way out to zero but as always I will let you know what state of charge we pull off the highway with and how much range or I should say how far we've gone at that point and we are just approaching the end point here let's take a look at the stats we have please charge battery immediately don't tell me what to do. We have 0.4 miles to our destination, 5% state of charge. So let's take a look at this, 5% still. I think this is where we're gonna have to pull off. If we go any farther, unfortunately, we probably won't make it. So uh, just because it's a huge distance between the chargers, 241 miles, 0.1 at 70 miles per hour. And this has gotta be the closest 70 mile per hour test we've ever done average speed of 69 including the u-turn and the beginning that is 
really impressive and like just an awesome, awesome route today. Let's make sure no one's coming. I think we're good. And let's go head up to about 60 miles an hour or so. The chargers are open and free and the store is open 24 hours. It's really the perfect spot for these late night range tests. And so let's just head on down this way. As soon as we get past the 25 mile per hour sign, just on the other side of that barrier, we can just run up and down this road at about uh, 55, 60 or so. About 65 miles an hour on this road that's next to the highway. And that's pretty much what I'll do. I'll just go up and down the road and then we'll get to the charger when the car decides to die. I think that'll be a pretty good plan. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not 70 miles per hour, so I still think that previous number counts, but uh, this is the perfect, perfect place to get the most accurate test results for a highway range test because we're still able to maintain a pretty good speed. I don't want to do more than 65 miles per hour just because this is already a bit over the speed limit, but middle of the night, no one's around. We're okay here at 65, I think. We are now down to 1% state of charge, just heading back over to the charger, two miles remaining, and then the power gauge backing off. Now I've noticed a couple different shutdown strategies with Tycon. One of them I tested, which was a German spec car, uh, just completely ran out, and then it wouldn't restart and it was done. Uh, another one, and most Tycons I've tested, actually uh, have this sort of hard brick wall coated in, and then you can restart them and get some more distance, but it's only like a few meters, like it's not much. So um, pretty much the dash dash to empty on the miles is like the bottom cutoff. We're gonna bring it back over to the charger and that'll be our range test. You can see the power meters pretty much all the way out. That's a really good indication that uh, we're truly out of juice here. You know, sometimes you can't rely on the miles. Sometimes it jumps around at low state of charge. This is why we run it until the cars pretty much are dead where they have no acceleration. That's the way you have to do it. And uh, yeah, only maybe a mile and a half left, two miles over to the charger. Hopefully we can make it over there, not too worried. I'm pretty sure this car has the secondary start feature that can get us a little bit more if it does die. Uh, and if it does die, I'll let you know. But otherwise, but I think we're just gonna pull right up to the charger, up this way, and that'll be that. And here we are, just pulling into the charger, 0% indicated and zero miles left. I love that whenever you get close to something too, you can get right up with the cameras, right up to the curb and then put it in park. I would call that proper range test. Everything's out, no power meter left, 0%, car's about to shut off. Let's take a look at the stats, shall we? And there you have it, a full proper 70 mile per hour highway range test with the Taycan Cross Turismo. It did 251.7 miles on one charge. That's an average of about 322 watt hour per mile. Keep in mind, it got pretty cold out. Uh, it does have heat scavenging though, so everything was warm. I don't think that affected the results a bit, but certainly not the same as a 70 degree day. Perfect conditions really, just sat at 70. A lot of our range tests, not a lot, but occasionally we'll get stuck behind a truck for a couple miles, you know, cumulatively. This was just sitting at 70. So I have to say, um, Maybe a, a little bit of a, you know, they're as standardized as we can make them, but this was like truly picture perfect, 70 mile per hour the entire time. And we were able to maintain highway speeds at the end. So that's impressive. It's about 30 miles off of the 4S sedan that we tested. Same drivetrain, same wheels. Actually, no, I tested a 4S on the big wheels. And so, yeah, I think the shape of this car paired with probably the rear motor not decoupling is where we're getting that difference in range. Either way, far surpassing the 215 miles of EPA range. Keep in mind, we very rarely even hit EPA range in most EVs because that is a mixed driving number. The highway only number, uh, I don't know what exactly what it is for this car, but we far surpass the advertised range rating uh, in Porsches. <laughs> and the Audi e-tron GT, but in pretty much no other cars. It's so, so impressive. I have to say the range test just went so comfortably as well. This thing is a bank vault on wheels. It's so quiet, it rides so nice. Man, it's so impressive. The time just flew by, really did. So nice work here, surpassing EPA. Uh, I think it probably could have done better. <clears throat> 
if it was maybe a little bit denser traffic, warmer day, and if it did the motor decoupling thing, but I'm glad we didn't have denser traffic. I prefer this type of test. This is why I try and run them at night, especially more recently, because I noticed, you know, a couple miles or a mile behind a truck here or there, that really can alter uh, results. So this was about as picture perfect as it gets, the car's about as perfect as it gets, and the range in real world paired with this charging curve means there's pretty much no faster charging EV or road tripping EV, I should say, until maybe we test the lucid air but that's a whole nother world we'll be playing around in let's uh end the video now thank you guys for watching again 251 ish miles right here so impressive and we'll see you on the next one Bye bye